Sounds ed. So I'm back with another garden update. <laughs> Obviously, I feel some type of way about it. <laughs> Sheds a tear. No, they're not doing horribly. Um, as you can see, though, they are struggling a little bit. Um, if you couldn't tell, leaves have fallen off. They're leaning and really just honestly, you guys don't know the timeline of it, but for where I'm at, as far as like how long ago I've transplanted them, um, if you remember that video, as you go watch, um, they should be like more lush than they are now for sure too. So they just aren't growing at a rate that they should be. What I just showed you guys were my tomato plants. Um, and I showed you guys those cause I feel like those specifically, these two are the ones that are struggling the most. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's because they have tomato blight, which is I think a form of powdery mildew. Um, oh, I got y'all all up in my pantry. <laughs> Sorry, again, transparency. That's my, that's my channel thing. Feel free to leave any like information if you have it down in the comments, if you you know know anything about gardening, but pretty sure that's a uh, tomato blight, a form of powdery mildew. After doing research, I've realized that, uh, which was my suspicion anyway, like I already kind of, I kind of knew, um, and I had a feeling this would be an issue. But with indoor gardening plants and stuff like that, they struggle a lot to get like proper aeration. Um, and so y'all know moisture buildup and no like proper like ventilation going throughout the soil um, will lead to bacteria growth. And so I think that um, moisture was built up inside the soil, inside the pots. And I think that it started to get really compacted um, inside of there. So no air was coming through leading to more bacterial growth. I think that's a struggle with those over there too. My, uh, that, oh, I can point to it. That is my kale and that over there is a red cabbage plant. Um, and those I feel like are struggling in terms of like growth rate, but they don't seem to have any like mildew issues, no disease, anything like that, which is great, but I just need to get them, you know, more, <laughs> um, more healthy in terms of growth, uh, figure out how to do that, how to foster growth. But these tomato plants struggling more. Well. Just as another update too, let me take y'all and show y'all the seedling station. Um, if you remember, this is where I transplanted from. Um, it ain't looking good. So let me turn on the lights and show y'all. Um, these are just my grow lights and uh, this is where we're at. Now, hear me out. With these, it's a little bit different because I intentionally stopped watering them. Um, <laughs> I hate, hate to say it, but I think I gave up a little bit. And I don't feel any type of way about it. Like I came to terms with the fact that A, I wouldn't have space to transplant all of these, which again, I also think that I had already mentioned in one of my former gar gardening videos. I wouldn't have space to transplant all of these, one. Um, two, a lot of them started to get disease issues as well. And I know that when that happens, it's really um, hard to come back from that. And so transplanting them into a whole bucket of soil, like even the good ones would have just felt like probably a losing battle. Even though I'm sure there was ways I could have done it, made it successful, it was just more than I think I had the energy for. The energy and the resources and the time. <laughs> So, yep, I said goodbye to a lot of my plants. What I was able to get transplanted, if you don't remember, was two different kinds of tomatoes, a red cabbage. Um, I transplanted some herbs, some parsley, some cilantro, and um, one more thing I'm missing, the kale. And so I got those, but I didn't get to transplant. A couple more that I really wanted to transplant, which were my peppers, um, like bell peppers. Uh, there was some lemon balm I really wanted to transplant, and I had some melon. Now, again, all of this stuff I didn't know if I I'll be able to grow the fruit anyway, but we were gonna try. I was prepared to really like supplement with as much, as much sun as I needed. That's why I got a crap ton of grow lights. Um, I was gonna supplement, you know, with as much fertilizer as I needed, cause those are the two, I think, biggest things that, um, as far as like natural resources that I don't have, you know, like I knew that they aren't outside, so they can't, the roots can't forage into the soil for nutrients. And so I need to provide enough nutrients and then obviously enough sun. So I didn't get to transplant a lot of that stuff, but you know, I am still kind of hopeful. If we go back over to um, my main plant station, my transplants, which are, that was in the kitchen. You'll see that I still have, um, you'll see I still have a good amount of growth. And so again, this is my kale. I actually harvested a couple of small, tiny leaves from that, like down here. You can kind of see the buds where I took from them. Um, and this this poor cabbage plant. I mean, it ain't. It barely has put on new leaves since I put it in there. I think it had two or three when I put it in there. 
um, this was weeks ago, and I've grown, specifically this red cabbage, I've grown a red cabbage before, not to fruit, because um, I didn't have fertilizer and I didn't have enough light, I think, as well. Um, but when I, the last time I transplanted a red cabbage, I mean, it was putting on leaves and foliage like crazy. Um, and so, yeah, I just couldn't get it to head up, you know, properly. Head up meaning, you know, when you have a head of cabbage from the grocery store, for those who don't know, because again, I know. I know, you know, sometimes Scott and I speak and it's like, what, what exactly are you referring to? But that just, you know, is referring to a head of cabbage. Head up means to form the, the tight, like, compacted leaves that we eat and know as a, a ball of cabbage. So I couldn't get it to do that. But yeah, that last cabbage, it was still kind of very prolific. I was amazed with just how much it was growing. So this is the state of it, but I do have, again, I have a little bit of hope because I have a couple solutions in mind. A is I think I'm gonna buy some perlite because I've been, again, I'm do, I do my research and you know try to do, figure out, you know, what would be best. I seem to have found that perlite is really good for um, aeration and um, water control. And so like there's, you know, different additives that you can add to your soil. Um, some help with moisture retention if you feel like a plant doesn't, you know, get enough water no matter what you do. Um, and some plants help with soil aeration. So it helps so that the uh, soil doesn't hold on to too much water, which is again, what I think my plants suffer from. And just in general, I read that indoor plants suffer from that um, often, you know, even if it's not like tomatoes, like again, tomatoes, I know are prone to that. Um, but indoor plants in general don't get enough aeration. And so I think I'm going to buy some perlite and add a crap ton of it to my soil. Um, I know hopefully I I'm not going to add too much cause I know it can mess with like the pH levels in the soil and stuff like that. Um, but I really, 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 really hope <laughs> that that helps with aeration and that that actually allows even probably some more of the roots to like forage deep into um, the bucket because I can tell probably for a fact that like that cabbage plant and some of the others, I think they haven't grown as big as they should because um, they haven't actually sunk down into that soil, into the growing medium and had enough space, um, you know, kind of like how with those seed starting pods, the plants are only gonna grow so big, you know, for those who don't know, because it's such a tiny space. Um, and so the roots can only support, a, you know, a certain size of plant. But with those, you know what I'm saying, since I've transplanted them, they're like the same size that they were. And so I'm like, I don't think that they're fully sinking down into the soil. And I've dug my hands in there before I actually saw and felt that the soil was like really compacted, you know, really tight. So hoping that perlite will help with that and make it more loose and aerated. I'm also going to, I think, spray some fungicide. So I'm still doing some um, research with this. Again, let me know if you have good recommendations, but y'all already know we want to be as natural as possible. Um, and really, I guess, like, I don't mind using, like, a branded fungicide or whatever um, when I say natural. Like, it doesn't have to be baking soda or something like that. It's just that with those, you there's always a concern of, like, what chemicals you're putting on your stuff, even if they claim to be natural. If you have any solutions for, like, fighting powdery mildew, fighting fungus, um, bacteria on plants, disease, all that good stuff, please send it to me. I know neem oil was one that I was looking into, but I had read that neem oil is more so good for preventing powdery mildew. Um, versus fighting it, you know, on a plant that is already infected. So I don't know, I also read about like a baking soda liquid solution. I'm closer to doing that, depending on what I find. I think I'm gonna go to the garden store this weekend, but if I don't see anything that I feel like uh, meets my, you know, expectations as far as like natural, since it's actually like, you know, the purpose, purposeful for fighting powdery mildew or tomato blight, um, and doesn't have any harmful chemicals. If I don't find that, I'm just gonna use a baking soda solution and I'm gonna spray that um, all in and through, you know, my tomato plants without drenching them too much, of course. And then after that, I think actually I might retransplant them because right now all of this is diseased, but honestly, that's a crap ton of um, like stem that can be buried. So for those who don't know, also like tomato plants, the deeper you can bury them, the better because all of the little hairs that they have on their stems, tomato plants, I'm not gonna get up close to it and show it right now, but tomato plants on their stem have a bunch of little micro hairs. And if you bury those micro hairs, every single one of them apparently will, you know, like becomes a root that sinks down into the soil. And so I think I'm gonna spray it and then retransplant it into the, uh, the bucket that is kind of uh, remade with more perlite for better aeration. So that's my plan. All we can do is hope. And then of course, if there is any other solutions I come across, then we'll try that. But that's where we're at, guys. This is what it's looking like. Again, my little station. I got a little dead flower there. It was nice while it lasted, but I didn't plan on transplanting it or anything, so I didn't 
yeah I knew it was gonna die at some point. <laughs> Thanks for watching my garden update. That's pretty much all I have. Please, 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 if you're watching and you have any knowledge, you know, please share it. This is, a, again, our little community. Um, so yeah, don't gatekeep. Let me know, let me know something. Appreciate y'all for watching. I will uh, see you guys in my next video in a few days. I'll see y'all then, <laughs> bye.